One point beef scientific notation and density. Um, this assignment is due for Wednesday, September 10th. It was assigned on Tuesday, September 9th. The EQ of this lesson is how do we represent measurements using scientific notation and calculate density. The objective is that students will be able to use proper scientific notation to represent diff different um, magnitudes of measurement and they'll be able to perform calculations of density. The real world connections are as follows. Scientific notation is important to make sense of large numbers in industrial measurements for shipments. Um, in terms of the outline of the lesson, first we'll be going over scientific notation, then we'll be going over sample problems, then we, we'll be going over uh, operations in scientific notation, then we'll be doing density calculations, then we'll be going over the guide practice questions, and then we'll be going over the homework. Now let's go over something called scientific notation. Uh, you probably have seen this in your math classes. The format of scientific notation always needs to be m times 10 to the n. All right, where m needs to be between 1 and 9, and n is the power of 10. And the value of n really doesn't matter because it could be o practically anything. All right, so um, let's just start by going over m first. Capital M means the number in front. So m needs to be between 1 and 9. All right, so um, examples of valid um, answers would be like 1.3 times 10 to the n. However, things like 0.3 times 10 to the third would be wrong because 0.3 is not between 1 and 9. If you want a number in the front before the 10, you always have to make it between 1 and 9. So for example, it would have to be 2.3 times 10 to the first, uh, 3.6 times 10 to the second or something like that. 0.9 times 10 to the third is not allowed because 0.9 is not between 1 and 9. Also, 10 times 10 to the first is wrong because 10 is not between 1 and 9. So the number in front that you multiply by always needs to be between 1 and 9. All right, n can be any value um, or power of 10 rather. And n tells you whether you move left or whether you move right. So let's see an example here. All right, so I'm just going to bring something up. Let's say we have two times 10 to the uh, third. 2e3 just means 2 times 10 to the third. All right, if we do 2 times 10 to the third, we notice we'll get 2,000. And that shows my first example. All right, um, if you notice, let's just go back, 2 times 10 to the third. n is greater than 0 because 3 is greater than 0. So once we do 2 times 10 to the third, here's what we have to do. You have to put a dot at the end of 2, and you have to move over 1, 2, 3 to the right because n is greater than 0. 3 is greater than 0, so you have to move 1, 2, 3 to the right to get 2,000. All right? So anytime n is greater than 0, you move um, a certain number of spaces to the right, and you start adding zeros. All right, so if it were 2 times 10 to the third, I would move 3 spaces to the right and add 0 each time I move to the right with the blank space. Um, on the other hand, let's say I have 2 times 10 to the negative third, all right? Here it's very different because here um, negative 3 or n is less than 0. So now this time instead of moving 3 to the right, we move 3 to the left because 2 times 10 to the negative third means that n is less than 0. All right, so we move 3 spaces to the left since it's negative 3 for n. 1, 2, 3 spaces um, to the left from 2. 1, 2, 3 spaces to the left because it's, again, 2 times 10 to the negative third. All right, that's all I got to do. Um, then you move 1, 2, 3 since n is less than 0, and n being less than 0 means you move left. And you move left 3 spaces since it's negative 3. All right, if it were, again, 2 times 10 to the third, you would move 3 spaces to the right because um, n is greater than 0, and um, therefore you would move to the right and you would move three spaces to the right since it's two times 10 to the third. Okay, so um, let's see how really quickly we write quantities using scientific notation. Um, first, you have to rewrite the number as a decimal between one and 10. This is m, all right? We'll see that in the next slide. Two, you have to move the decimal to get back to the original. You need to move left or right depending on what your original number was. Uh, three, you have to find n. So if you moved left to get to the original number, from the um, decimal in step one, n is negative. If you moved right to get to the original decimal or value, then n is positive. Finally, number four, you have to write scientific notation. m, which is from step one, times 10 to the n power, which you found from step three. 
All right, so use steps one and three to make up the scientific notation format. Even though this may seem confusing right now, we'll go over in the next slide. Now let's go over sample problems. Notice here that we have to use um, conversions uh, from um, one, one prefix to another, just like we did yesterday. So we're going to add that in as an extra step in step one. For example, you have to go from kilojoules to joules in example one, which is kilo to the base. And in example two, you have to go from joules to kilojoules, which is from the base to kilo as a prefix. So we'll just add that in as step one. All right, but before we go into these examples, let's really quickly review um, how we're going to approach these problems. Remember, I just said step one, you have to add in the extra step of converting between the powers of 10, like kilo, hecto, deca, then the base, and you have deci, centimilli. You have to perform that conversion. Step two, um, steps two through five are all shown in the previous slide with um, writing something in scientific notation format. So step two, you have to rewrite the number no matter what it is, even if it's a decimal like 0 0.0347, no matter what it is, you need to find a way to write the decimal as a number between 1 and 10. And this is capital M. Remember, capital M needs to be in the range of 1 to 9. All right, so you have to rewrite the number no matter what it is as a decimal between 1 and 10. Step three, you have to move, des move the decimal to get back to the original. Uh, step four, you have to find n. If you moved left in step three, n is negative. If you moved right in step three, n is positive. Finally, in step five, you have to write scientific notation in the form of capital M times 10 to the n. Let's just remember, capital M come from, comes from uh, step two, and capital N comes from step four. All right, so let's just go through these examples now. Example one says express 427 kilojoules in joules using scientific notation. If we notice, we make the KHD DCM chart, and kilojoules has a prefix kilo over here, and joules is just the base unit, so it's the base right here. All right, so kilo is the starting point, base is the ending point. To go from kilo to the base, which is kilojoules to joules, you have to move one, two, three decimal places to the right. All right, so we have to perform that conversion from 427 kilojoules to um, joules. So since we move three decimal places to the right, we have to start off at 427 point and move three spaces to the right. So we have 427 point and move one, two, three spaces to the right to get joules. We have 427,000 joules. You're going from kilojoules to joules, so you have to go one, two, three to the right. All right, so you have 427,000 joules, right? All right, so we finished step one, converting from joules to kilojoules. In step two, um, we have to rewrite the number as a decimal between one and 10, and this is capital M. So even though it says 427,000 joules, we can't work with that in scientific notation. We have to convert that to a decimal between one and 10. So in 427,000, we see 4.27. All right, so we change 4, 427,000 to 4.27 because that's the capital M or the decimal between 1 and 10. 4.27 is between 1 and 10. All right, so that's what we have now as the capital M. In step three, we need to move the decimal to get back to the original, which is 427,000. 427,000 is what we originally had in step one. So to get from 4.27, we had to move one, two, three, four, five. So let's just remember that to get from 4.27 to the original 427,000, we had to move five spaces to the right. So in step four, therefore, n is equal to 5 since we moved 5 spaces to the right. Therefore, n is positive because we moved 5 spaces to the right. Finally, since we have m and n, we can rewrite um, the value in joules in scientific notation. 427,000 is m, which is 4.27, times 10 to the n, which is 10 to the fifth. So if we plug in capital M from step 2 and capital N from step 4, we get 4.27, sorry times 10 to the fifth joules. In example two, I'm just gonna go through this really fast. Um, we have to convert 340 joules to kilojoules and express in scientific notation. To go from 340 joules to kilojoules, we go one, two, three to the left. 
since we're going from joules, which is the base, to kilojoules, which is kilo. So one, two, three. So to go from 340 joules to 340 kilojoules, just like we showed here, we had to move um, from 340 point, one, two, three to the left. All right, just like we did from base to kilo, we got to move three to the left. So we get 0 0.340 kJ. In step two, we had to rewrite it as a decimal between um, one and 10. So in 0 0.340, we find 3.40, which is capital M. This is capital M because 3.40 is between one and 10. Then we had to move back to the original. So to get from 3.40 to the original from step one of 0 0.340, we had to move one to the left. All right. And in step four, since we move one to the left, we know that n is negative since you moved left. And specifically, n is equal to negative one since you move one to the left. All right, so since we know that m is 3.40 and n is equal to negative one, the um, scientific notation form is equal to 3.40, which is m, times 10 to the negative one, where negative one is equal to n, since we move one to the left from 3.40 to get 0 0.340. That's it. Um, I won't go over the slide in detail, but all you have to do is when you're adding or subtracting or multiplying or, or dividing anything in scientific notation, you just have to do these on the calculator, get the number as it is, and then convert to scientific notation. Here I did the same thing. I, I multiplied this using a calculator, got the full number, then converted to scientific notation. So for example, when I added these up, I got 164,000. Then I found the decimal, which is 1.64 between one and 10, and I moved one, two, three, four, five. So it's 1.64 times 10 to the fifth, and it's n, e n is equal to positive five since you move five to the right. Here we have, a, what is it, uh, let's see, 30 million, so we moved we found 3.00 as capital M, and we move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to the right. So we know it's 3.00 times 10 to the 7th, where n is equal to 7 since we move 7 to the right. Um, now let's go over density calculations. D is equal to M divided by V, or density, which is D, is equal to mass, M, divided by V, which is volume. This is in table T. But just again, D is equal to M divided by V. Density is equal to mass divided by volume. All right? All we're doing in these three, three example problems here is we're just plugging in. So for example, the volume here is, for number one, uh, 2.30 times 10 to the second. So we plug that in for volume. And the um, mass we don't know, but the density we know is 4.50. So 4.50 equals m divided by 2.30 times 10 to the second. To get m, we had to cross multiply uh, 4.50 times 2.30 times 10 to the second. And we get 1,035 grams. Here we do the same thing. We're just finding density by doing um, 58.3 grams, which is the mass, divided by the volume, which is 7.47 cubic centimeters. 58.3 divided by 7.47 is 7.80 grams per cubic centimeter. Here we're doing something very similar, except we don't know volume. The density is 1.54 grams per cubic centimeter. The uh, volume is 79.6 grams, and we don't know the volume. So in order to find volume, we have to cross multiply 1.54 and V to get 1.54 V, and 1.54 V is equal to 79.6. We divide 1.54 from both sides. We get V is equal to 79.6 divided by 1.54. Therefore, if you divide this, you get V is equal to 51.69 cubic centimeters. So all you're doing with density calculations is you're plugging into this formula and cross multiplying um, where necessary to just find what you're looking for. Number one, uh, got a practice question. So number one, which of the following is written in proper scientific notation? Just remember, M needs to be between one and 10. and um, three of these are not written properly because for three of these, M is not between one and 10. The only one that's written properly is 1.25 times 10 to the fourth because 1.25 is between one and 10. 0.67 is definitely not between one and 10 and now there's 13 and now there's 516. Remember, M needs to be between one and 10 as a decimal. All right, this you can just do on a calculator and you can just um, convert to proper scientific notation. Same idea here. Um, 253 kilojoules, you know it's 253,000 joules if you just use the KHD DCM chart. And if you convert that to s proper scientific notation, I just want you to try that on your own. It's 2.53 times 10 to the fifth. Uh, 50 joules, if you just use the key KHG uh, DCM chart, you get 50 uh, joules is equal to 0 0.050 kilojoules. And finally, for number six, you just have to plug in um, the uh, density and the um, 
and the volume and solve for the mass. If you cross multiply density times volume, you get the mass, which is uh, 0.728. Please try these on your own for homework for Wednesday, September 10th. Thank you.